The Eternals is brought to you by the letter D for desperation. Kevin Feige wasn't kidding when he said that the film would have cosmic impact on the MCU. There is so much information in this film, it even begins with a text crawl. I know, when's the last time you saw one of those It wasn't Star Wars? In a nutshell, the Eternals were made by the Celestials. Their purpose is to fight the Deviants, beasts that devour the sentient life of planets, all the while guiding sentient life, in this case mankind, towards advanced technology and prosperity. Why? Well, more on that later. In the present, the Deviants are back, but now they have abilities they did not have previously. So now it's time Time to get the band back together to fight back and save mankind. Except from Thanos. And Ultron. Oh, and not to mention, first things first, these Power Ranger knockoffs give the performances of planks. It doesn't matter who, novel actors like Leah McHugh, experienced actors like Richard Madden, or veteran actors like Angelina Jolie. Every one of them could have been replaced by particle board with paint and nothing would change. If you were hoping to see Jolie or Hayek act circles around the others like Gary Oldman did most of the cast in Dracula, that ain't happening. Both Jolie and Hayek get the Lori Strode treatment here, doing almost absolutely nothing like it's a competition with Patrick Starr. Even the presumed lead character Cersei has the personality of Asphalt, and despite how many times people desperately lie to themselves, Kumal is not funny. I don't know the Eternals comics, so I won't bark up the character alteration tree yet, but there were some scenes like the gay kiss that were removed from numerous countries. This only confirms the desperation. Disney and Marvel don't really care about my representation, and will placate to the money. Moving Moving on, the story is probably the weakest link in this chain. It is a muddled mess of numerous side plots and character scenes thrown together to form some sort of plot. The problem is, ten characters squeezed together in a runtime that feels like sardines in a can. Due to the density, the tone shifts harder than a Tron bike. One minute everything is relaxed, the next everyone is fighting for their lives, followed by a brief sadness that is immediately overlapped by a happy reunion. If the fate of the planet is on the line, but the heroes are lounging around like a college dorm, then you've lost my care for the situation. This is where the spoiler warning comes in here, so it, this is the timestamp to skip to. Alright, so compound everything I said with a major revelation about the universe's creation and then throw it all out like three-week-old pizza. It amounts to almost nothing here, as the Eternals were only made because the Deviants broke from their programming. Yep, the Eternals are like the Constellars from World of Warcraft, to observe and protect planets by the Celestials who, upon completing their task, wipe their minds like Nova from Starcraft. You see, the Celestials are birthed from planets by feeding off its sentient life. Once a celestial is ready, they break out of the planet like a baby chick does an egg, which is similar origin to the titans of World of Warcraft. That's weird. Anyway, if each planet is actually a celestial seed, uh, wait a minute. Who's under that mask? <gasps> Blizzard! Another serious fault is how many things are touched on but never expanded. Like the Deviant that just wants to live but it's sentenced to death. Well, off with its head. Or Athena randomly glitching and going berserk because the Celestial downloaded too much RAM. Or Mockery who is deaf not because another Eternal injured her but just because she is deaf. Those seeds for conversation of dealing with our past, our present, our future are there, but never touched on again like a porn star became a nun. The Eternals is an absolute mess. The story is weak, with a worthless misdirect of a villain and a main one that at least feels like an attempt at a sympathetic villain with the execution of a cheap circumcision. However, even the more simple things Marvel is known for are uninspired here, like the costumes of the performances. Actually, about two-thirds of the way through the film, during a big reveal, a group of about four or five people in the very center of the theater got up and left. If that doesn't emphasize how poor this film is, then I don't know what will. Marvel has struck out 0 for 3 in theaters, and I can only imagine the higher-ups must be panicking at the piss-poor box office performance and regretting stealing those Blizzard storylines. Now, thanks for watching. Please like, share, ring the bell for notifications, and if you want to watch more movie reviews, then subscribe and check out my review of Last Night in Soho at the link over there, and I'll see you in the next video.